I'm Jeremy Pang, Chinese chef, food writer, and cookery teacher. I might be Chinese, but just love all types of Asian cooking. I'm also crazy about the food the British Isles has to offer, so I'm hitting the road to meet the people behind the produce and give their ingredients a wonderful Asian twist. How is that? Fabulous. Hello, that's banging. Really Moorish. I'll be cooking up some amazing dishes out and about around the UK. So they can get nice and hot. Back at base, I'll be sharing some absolute classics. It's looking beautiful. And I'll be taking Joe Swash from zero to hero of Asian cookery. I've got sure. this. Thank you. Looks amazing. So if you love the food and flavours of Asia but think it's too complicated to try at home, then think again. That's lovely. To perfection. I eat the tail. Like a true Chinese person. Stick around and join me in my Asian kitchen. Welcome to my Asian kitchen. Today I'm turning up the heat and adding a little bit of zing to all of my dishes. There's nothing better than that little bit of spice. Coming up on today's show, my cooking student, the brilliant Joe Swash, is feeling the heat in the classroom. Please do the honours. Look at that! I teach him how to make wontons in chilli broth. I'm on the Gower Peninsula to meet Dan, who farms his sheep on a rather unusual pasture. I make spicy Xinjiang lamb and mixed veg skewers and chilli soy. And there's a dessert with a spicy secret. Before all that, my first dish is using a really unique ingredient, the Sichuan peppercorn. And this dish is called mouth-watering chicken. That's a nice name. The, the sort of literal translation for this is saliva chicken. And I wonder why we changed that name in English. Sichuan peppercorns, you know, they leave this sort of numbing feeling on your tongue. And that's why they work perfectly with dried chilies or any type of chili. And then we really are sort of turning up that spice and that heat. All of this is going to go straight into a wok on a low heat. Just let those dried chilies toast away whilst we do the rest. And we're kind of building up kind of this base, nice spicy stock. I've got some bay leaves, which I can add straight into the wok as well, and then some ginger. Now with the ginger, really keep it nice and simple. I'm just going to cut chunks out of this and give it a bash. Now because this is all going into stock, I'm not going to chop it up too fine or anything like that. No faff, just straight into the wok. No oil either. I don't want it to be too greasy at this stage, because I want to keep the stock quite light, but packed full of flavour. Next up, some spring onions. And again, this is not for garnish, this is just for flavour. So even if I just sort of roughly chop it into sort of two or three lengths, they can go straight in as well. Now what you will smell is that lovely sort of fresh, almost grassy aroma. Next up, my shouting rice wine. And this stuff, Smells a little bit sweet, a little bit salty, a little bit savoury. It's quite aromatic. The rice wine can go straight in. Now that that liquid's in there, we can whack the heat up and bring it to a nice vigorous boil. I've got some chicken stock here, a fair bit of chicken stock. And that's going to go straight over the top. So once that stock is bubbling, then you can add your chicken to it. We've got this lovely chicken thighs on the bone. I'm keeping it on the bone so we can sort of slice them off and they keep nice and tender, but also to hold their shape when I sort of present the dish. Straight in. Give your hands a clean. So that chicken needs about 15 minutes of boiling or poaching before I then switch the heat off. But once I've switched it off, I'll probably leave it in that hot stock for another at least five minutes, if not ten, just to cook all the way through, but stay nice and succulent. Now this dish wouldn't be called mouth-watering chicken. It didn't actually physically make your mouth water, 
So these Sichuan peppercorns, you know, they've got a really unique, almost tingling feeling that they leave on your tongue. And I'm going to actually toast them up, which will accentuate that sort of strange numbing feeling even more. Really make your mouth water. I can see that the peppercorns are starting to just catch. I don't want them to burn. So they're straight out into the pestle and water. With this pan still on the heat, I've got some sesame seeds. And I'm going to toast those as well. These sesame seeds, nice and golden brown. So you can add those to your pestle and mortar. Right, now time for your workout. Really get into those peppercorns, crush it all up nicely. Not all of your sesame seeds will necessarily crush. And the sound of doing this is almost like a crackling because the heat that's in the pestle and mortar that's come off those spices, they're kind of still cooking. Now you can see. I've got this lovely sort of spicy crumb just from two ingredients. But with all these toasted sesame seeds in there, you've got those stronger spices like the Sichuan peppercorn. That toasted flavour of the sesame seeds just mellows it all out. Now, I've got a bit more garlic, ginger, spring onion. And I'm just going to finely chop this all up, add it to the pestle and water. This is where all the flavour is going to sort of seep into the meat, that succulent poached meat at the very last stage. And this dish can be eaten hot, it can be eaten cold. So this sauce or this spicy topping should be really punchy. No one likes biting into a big chunk of raw garlic. So make sure you get this nice and fine. Because all this is going to get is a quick sear with some hot oil. Garlic into the spices. And then some ginger to go with it. Add your ginger. Lastly, some spring onion, which I'm just going to finely slice into rings. And all that can go in together, ready for a good sear. And that's perfect timing, because this chicken has had its 15 minutes. And I can see that it's pretty much cooked. So I'm going to switch that off so I can forget about it. Five, maximum 10 minutes, just sitting in that hot stock. My pan here is nice and hot. And now I'm going to get a good amount of oil into that frying pan. And I want that oil to get to a nice smoking point. Once it's smoking hot, It'll sear that ginger and spring onion and garlic. That oil is really smoking hot. So just go careful with this, but it will sizzle up very quickly. Straight over. Give that a good mix through. And at the moment, it will look quite pasty in texture, but you can see how hot that oil was. We're very nearly there. We're on to the sauces. We're going to start with this chill chow chili oil. I'm not just going to use the oil, but I'm going to use 
the sort of pasty, chili flaky bit too. And that oil will just add loads of colour to this dish when it sits over the chicken. Next up, some seasoned rice vinegar. And it's got a very unique sweet, sour, savoury flavour to it. And then to balance that all out, some sugar. Just got to get that bit of sweetness into there too. You want to give it a good mix so that sugar dissolves well into the sauce. Now, all that lovely paste that we've made up can get added to this. You want it kind of to be able to cover the chicken. And I find that sometimes, you know, when you're pounding your sesame seeds, it might be a bit more pasty than you want. If you feel like you've got that, then just take a little bit of that chicken stock and just thin it out that little bit. So I've added just half a ladle full of stock into there, just so that it's got more of a dripping consistency and it can kind of sit and engulf the meat. We're just here to compile from here. It's really easy. I've got some coriander, which I'm going to add to the stalk parts to the sauce. Never waste coriander stalk. It's got loads of flavour in it. Straight into the sauce. And then the leaves, I just sort of break up slightly. A little bit in over the top, and then a little bit to garnish. Now my chicken would have cooled quite quickly actually. And this is why I keep it on the bone. I'll show you that. If I just slice into it, just at a little crisscross, like a little diagonal, and then run your knife around the edges, you can just take the bone off, turn it round, and do the same on the other side. And then just sort of remove that chicken bone like so. I'm going to slice this now and then start to so plate this up. And then just start to layer your chicken pieces, nice and easy into your bowl. Now, the real chilli moment, and that is this amazing mouth-watering sauce that you just want to slather that chicken with all over. And if you have any more of that chilli oil, just dress that plate. Make people know there's spice in this dish. Your peanuts are just crushed to add a bit of crunch. And there we go. My mouth-watering chicken. I love a bit of spice. I've got loads more in store. Today is all about spice. Earlier, I made Sichuanese mouth-watering chicken. Coming up later on, I meet Dan at his extraordinary farm to find out about his sheep. Before firing up the barbecue to make spicy skewers and add a bit of spice to the pudding. You know who I've got with me, Joe Swash. Hello, mate. My Asian food ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You are getting good at this. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I've, I have. I feel like a sponge. I take, <laughs> I've sucked in all this knowledge. Like like a tofu. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the jewelry's still out with tofu. Well, I've got another tofu dish oh, for you. Amazing. <laughs> are you excited? 
I am, I am. I'm going to give tofu, the first time round, tofu was a lot better than I thought. It's a nice alternative. We're going to do some wontons. Do you like dumplings? I love a dumpling. And you like chilli? Yeah. A little bit of spice. We're going to start, as all Chinese food should start, yeah. the main base of garlic and spring onion. Bash, chop. Everything's finely chopped for your dumpling filling. Finely, finely as chopped, As fine yeah? as you can get it. Yeah. Okay. And mate, this sounds like a good thing if you was with the kids, the kids can get involved. It's, it's amazing for that. And actually, you know, we've got ready-made pastries, so it's actually quite quick and easy. Yeah. That can go in here. Straight in. Spring onion. Go for it. Down and forwards, hit the board. Yeah. Right, I'm just trying that then. Yeah, just relax a little. Yeah, just relax. So that mm. can go straight in to the mix. Next up, yep. Chinese chives. Right. Like these guys are like more vegetable like than a Western chive. The big, the bigger. The crunch. I'd liken them more to like wild garlic than uh, than sort of a chive. There you go. It's just, it's just, it's just I mean, you make my life easier because I don't have to do anything. That can go in the bowl. Okay. And then we've got these sh lovely shiitake mushrooms here. You're you're a fan of mushrooms. Love mushrooms. Yeah. These are great because they they start like this. They're dehydrated. Right. And then what you do is you soak them in it for a minimum of an hour mm -hmm. in hot water. Yeah. Ideally overnight. So mushrooms can go in there. Okay. And then we've got some Chinese leaf, but you can use sweetheart cabbage, any type of cabbage, mm -hmm. or any type of leaf really. Right. Right. Just to provide a nice sort of natural freshness. And then your tofu. Your tofu, that's yeah. fresh, firm tofu. And you're not gonna like handling this because I'm gonna eat, get you to actually crumble it. Right. With your hand. So you want me to mix this in there? Yeah, 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 just really crush it in. Get it in there. And this should help you with the tofu texture. Okay. Because tofu, as it, even firm tofu can be quite wet. Panko breadcrumbs will soak up a lot of that moisture. Yeah. And it will make the tofu feel more like minced meat. Amazing. So this is a vital part of this process. Especially for someone like you who doesn't particularly like tofu. Have we got, have we got more panko? Can we put more panko in there? <laughs> I think that's plenty. Sure that's enough. Right, you keep mixing that. Just really sort of mix it in and squish it together. And then I've got salt, sugar and white pepper. Sweet, salt. Yeah. That's all going to go in there. A little bit of sesame oil. Okay. And that is pretty much where most of the flavour is going to come from. Can I mix again? Go for it, yeah. All right, okay. give your hands a clean. I'll show you how to make it. Okay. Thanks, Chef. All right. For tidying oh, yeah. up my mess. I've got to do all your hard work <laughs> for you now, yeah? <laughs> right, you ready for the fun part? Yes, let's do this. Have you ever made pasta before? Once before, yeah. How did that go? Not very well. <laughs> okay. First time and last time all I've right, ever but, done it. But this, one, this time the pasta sheets are made for you. Yes. And actually, in fact, like, this literally is like an egg pasta. Okay. Like, egg, water, flour. Same, up, right? same process. But the nice thing is, it's already made. Yeah. And it's nice and thin. So you can buy these from the local Asian supermarket. Get a teaspoon of your mix. Yep. Into the centre. And you want to hold your pastry, like, place it diagonal to you. Okay. Okay. Like a diamond, yeah? Yeah. Little Dip a little bit of water in. Okay. Drizzle over the top, but not too much. Just a little drizzle. A little drizzle. Just a Use your finger as a paint, bro. Yeah, that's right. Very calm now. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. This, is, this so is how we should be cooking. You go uh, diagonal over the top, okay. okay? And then you press, so you thumb, yep. and press down that. Okay. Index fingers. Yeah. One index finger on one side and press the edge. Yeah. So that's not one index. Or, or really. massive thumb. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fewer times you touch the, the pastry, the better. The better. Okay, which right. is why I say index finger close. But, you know, you make up your own way, it's fine. Right, and then we're going to go triangle pointing downwards. Yep. All right. And we're going to make what we like to call the Dark Knight Rising. Okay. Okay. Right. It really is perfect for kids, this. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I, I, perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, <laughs> Joe Swash. <laughs> right. All right, and then you take a little dab of water. Yeah. Over one ear. Just the one. And then we're gonna we're gonna close Batman's ears, overlap, and then close from the middle up. Holding hands, Cecile. Holding hands, 
and squeeze. Perfect eight. Yep. It is like a bit of a little team of superheroes, isn't it? They are very good looking. Yeah. So this is, from here it's easy, because that's the hard job done. Okay. Right? Uh, so all we have to do now is make up a quick sauce, or broth more. And I, what I've got is I've got the steam basket, mm. and then like a pasta bowl inside. Right, so we're going to make up the broth with these ingredients here. Let's go for this, this stuff here, which is like chill chow chilli oil. Yeah. Right, because that's where all the flavour is, this base of like, garlic, chilli flakes, slowly sort of cooked off in quite a lot of oil. This stuff here is like a vegetarian equivalent of an oyster sauce. Okay. So this is a mushroom stir-fry sauce. Oh, I do love mushrooms. Right. And it's got the same texture as oyster sauce. Yeah. Gives you that base savoury flavour. Whilst you're mixing it, I'm going to give you about a tablespoon of rice vinegar for that slight tart Slight sort of sour. Yep. And then we're going to top the rest up with vegetable stock. Brilliant. Which you can just buy, you know, you can buy bags of it these days. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, Very easy. Process. Yes. And, and we're just going to lay those in. So, yeah, lay, lay, your, lay so your superheroes in. Yeah, I, I, have to say, I do think mine are slightly better looking than I yours. I think yours are, to be honest. The Pentis overtaking the master. I don't mind that. That's, that's, that's the whole point, isn't it? That is the point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too big for my boots, isn't All I? Right, let's make it look... Let's make it look the part. I'm going to cover it with a lid. Right, so that water needs to be boiling hot. Right. It's steaming on full steam for about six, seven minutes. So we've got time for a cup of tea. Lovely. I ain't got no tofu in it, has it? <laughs> <laughs> They're done. Are they done? Shall we have a little look? I think so. Do you want to open them? No, 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 no. You're, Are you sure? No, this is. Please, do the honours. Look at those. That. Look. And they kind of just shout out fun and tasty for themselves, don't they? I love the colour. They go. They go almost like a, a, a deeper yellow, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it's all there, and we can literally just serve it like this. So you can just take the whole steam basket out, serve it up. Now I'm going to see a, I've really converted you with a tofu. <laughs> Let's do it, really. <laughs> Come on then. Let's have a go. So, try a dumpling. Get a bit of that broth on there. Yeah, I'll pop it down for you. There we go. It's a mouthful, that, isn't it? Yeah. Mmm. I like that. How's the spice? Not too strong at all. No? It's nice and warm in the back of my throat, so I can feel it building. And what about the filling? The filling's lovely. I can't really taste the tofu. The tofu just adds a bit of a bit of depth to it. So yeah, yeah, and holds it together, right? Yeah, I'm getting a nice little crunch from the from the vegetables. The mushrooms? The mushrooms that they have to give it that meatiness. And the flavour, you get a lot of flavour from the mushrooms. Well done. That's good, that's a good one ton. Down the hatch. Mmm. I think it, Joe's enjoyed the spice to be a, to be fair. I liked it, yeah. It's gonna wipe some sweat off my brow. meat that comes to mind in Asian cuisine. But in certain regions, it's the star of the show. And I'm here in the Gower to see how these sheep roam around these beautiful salt marshes. Hi, Dan. Hello there. How you doing? How are you? Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. I mean, this is vast, isn't it? Yes, yeah, uh, pretty of a different place really to normal farming. I believe this is the biggest salt marsh in Britain. Wow. Uh, and then there's seven grazers on this actual marsh. We've been there since the 60s and then me and my brother have taken over running the uh, salt marsh lamb side of things. This is an amazing place to grow up. It's pretty unique. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw a castle on the top of the hill. Is that yours? It came with a farm basically. It's a 14th century manor house. 
um, which just sits right next to the sheep sheds. So the tide really comes all the way in here? Yeah, at least once a month this whole marsh will be covered. And you're out here every day, I take it? Uh, every few days, yeah, I'm out here moving sheep or uh, taking them to higher ground. I mean, we're standing in the middle of the salt marsh. You know, what, what makes salt marsh lamb so different? Um, because it gets covered by the tide every sort of couple of weeks, um, you don't get the traditional grasses growing. Um, so we've got the sorrel, sea lavender, samphire, thrift. You can see some samphire here. Yeah, yeah there's a little bit of it. Just it's just coming to the end of the season, but um, there's still a little bit left. I mean, yeah, I love samphire because it, it, I just love that sort of natural saltiness. Um, that is lovely. So the diet is clearly quite unique. Yeah, because, um, because the marsh is obviously tidal, the only thing that grows out here are salt tolerant herbs. Okay. And then the sheep have got the extensive ranges that they can walk around and just graze wherever they want. Does the sheep taste like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get the salts going through the meat, it just gives it a different taste. Well, I mean, I'm still snacking on this uh, samphire, so I can see why your sheep yeah. like it so much. It's a bit addictive, isn't it? It is quite addictive, yeah. <laughs> and if I don't eat all of the samphire before the sheep do, yeah, then... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I can yeah. find a bit more fuel <laughs> once you get through that. Oh, thanks for feeding me. Yeah, yeah no problem. Let's, let's go find the sheep. Yeah, no problem, follow me. Isn't Dan a lucky man? I mean, he owns a castle. He's got a sheep farm on a salt marsh. It's pretty unique. And their lamb, and this lamb that he's given me, is this lovely piece of rump steak. Got some great marbling in there, a good bit of fat around the outside. I'm gonna make a Xinjiang lamb skewer. It's a spicy cumin lamb skewer, along with some nice chilies and different veg that I'm gonna put on the barbecue as well. We're gonna start with a dry rub. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually toast up some Sichuan peppercorns. Now these guys are really sort of tingly on your tongue and it, it's almost got this little menthol flavor to it. And as soon as you start toasting those, you'll get a fragrance that you may or may not be used to, but it's well worth trying. Whilst it's still hot, some sea salt in there, and then a good spoon of chili flakes. And they will toast up with the sort of residual heat that you're getting from this pan. I've got some cumin. And you want a couple of teaspoons of that. Now I'm gonna get these all into the pestle and mortar, and then grind these up. I'm making a lot of noise, but I mean, this place is so vast, I'm pretty sure I won't wake up those sleeping lambs. It's worth, once you've sort of given it a good pound, have a little smell of that. And actually, what I love about this is actually the color as well. You know, you've got this really lovely sort of orangey red from that mix of the cumin and the chili. I'm gonna use this to flavor the meat and the veg. You can use whatever vegetables you want. I've got some red pepper, some green chilies, some shiitake mushrooms. And I've got these baby leeks as well that work an absolute treat. I quite like to leave the vegetables as chunky as possible. This is really easy. You just wanna keep it nice and simple, just get your veg onto a skewer, however you wish. Make it look pretty. My shiitake mushrooms, my leek. This is all gonna get covered in a good bit of that spice mix. And then my lamb. I wanna keep it quite nice and chunky and I don't mind keeping that fat on. Even when the knife's going through this rump, I can feel how tender that is. Now, time to build up the marinade. I'm gonna go with a little bit more cumin first. And then because I've got salty in the dry spice, I'm gonna sweeten this up with a bit of sugar. And then I've got some Shaoxing rice wine here. 
which you can find in Asian supermarkets, but you can also swap it out with a nice, sweet, dry sherry. Or brandy even works too. Some oyster sauce. Really sort of will st start to bring out the spice and the saltiness. When you marinate your lamb, it's really important to roll your sleeves up and get into it. Give it a good massage through. Give it some Welsh welly. I'm gonna use the dry spice, which also has that sea salt in it, just before I put it onto the barbecue. Let's skewer these guys up. Careful with your fingers. But with this great quality meat, it literally just slides across the skewer. And just before we pop these skewers onto the fire, you want to take your spice mix and be really generous with it. And get it over the top of the fire. Sprinkle that all over your lamb. And then straight onto the fire and just a little drizzle of oil will just help that out nicely. Now we're cooking. My peppers and all my veg, I'm just going to oil and salt before I pop them on. I just want these to char nicely. Just take care of that lamb. You want it charred but not overcooked. Whilst they're cooking, I'm going to make up a quick dipping sauce. I've got some coriander, so I'm going to make it up along with some chill chow chilli oil here. And this chilli oil, just to accentuate the spice. And then I've got a premium light soy, which will Again, add saltiness and then some seasoned rice vinegar to add a bit of tartness to this. Good pinch of sugar to get some balance in that. Give that a good mix of that coriander so it mixes into it well. My vegetables charred really nicely. My sauce. And then don't you dare waste this extra spice mix. That can go all over the top. And then a little bit more on the side, just in case you want another dip. My nice and simple, but fiery Xinjiang lamb. My mouth is watering just looking at this. I'm going to dip it in a bit of that sauce. A bit more of that spice mix. The marinade sort of dances around with that spice mix. And then the sauce itself just really cuts through. The lamb is so super tender. This is really Moorish. There's one more dish to come. Plum steamed pudding with an Asian twist, naturally. Today's dishes have all had a little bit more than just a hint of spice. From my chicken with Sichuan pepper to the wontons in a chilli broth with Joe and my tasty skewers with that beautiful Gower salt marsh lamb. My last dish is a steamed plum pudding. I'm going to start with my pudding moulds. I've just greased the inside of them and put a little bit of baking parchment on the base of each mould. Now, our first ingredient for this is quite unusual, especially for desserts. And this is a plum sauce. And a plum sauce, a Chinese plum sauce, is usually used for things like roast duck or dipping spring rolls into. But to me, a plum sauce is pretty much 
a plum jam. It's definitely sweet, which is perfect for this sort of stickiness that I want for my steamed plum puddings. And then following on with the spice theme, these beautiful star anise. Smell great. They've got a really unique sort of almost aniseed flavor to them. I'm going to place one of those into the center of that plum sauce. Next up, we're onto the plums. And I'm going to put half a plum into each one of these molds. I always recommend sort of draw a line down the height of your plum and round it before you then twist it. So you can then pick out the stone relatively easily. And these I'm just going to place inside down into that plum sauce straight over your star anise. So we're ready to make our sponge. And like any sponge, we're going to start with sort of fluffing up your sugar. And what you might think would be butter, we've actually got baking spread here. Got some golden caster sugar. And I'm going to get creaming this mix. And this baking spread is kind of like baking margarine. It's got that lighter feel than butter. And I want to get this to a nice, fluffy, creamy texture. Just bring that back into the middle before you keep going. This is all looking nice and light and fluffy. So we're going to start adding my eggs. One egg in. Give it a mix. Egg two. In you go. That last egg is going in and just keep whisking. And you might see this mix at this point just starting to curdle a little bit. That's okay because when the flour comes in, it will all just sort of bring it back together again. Flour next, and this is self-raising flour. Just say so it's that nice rise, and now we've fluffed up the other ingredients. We'll get a good sort of texture on the pud. Now, to work alongside the rest of the spice in this, we've got some five spice. And again, five spice, the main flavor actually comes from star anise, cinnamon, which just work perfectly with puddings and savory food. That little dust over the top. And then I'm going to zest some of this orange because orange zest will go really well with all those sort of bittersweet flavours. So here is where the cake comes together. Just fold round, bring that flour in and twist your bowl and fold and twist and fold and twist and you will get there. Now, once you've got this lovely thick cake batter, you might look at it and think, oh, I mean, that's dripping, but is it dripping enough? I want it a little bit thinner than that. And with a sort of classic cake, you might use some milk or something like that. Just put 
a little squeeze of orange juice in. What you're looking for when you pick this up is that it should easily drop into the mold. I'm going to go spoon by spoon into each mold and you're trying to sort of fill the mold pretty much three quarters full. Just to allow the sponge space to rise up and get nice and soft and fluffy. We're pretty much there. We are now onto finishing touches. And this is time for a bit of light origami. I've got some baking parchment and some tin foil here. And all I'm gonna do is fold this up once and then fold it back again. Now the parchment is to help everything not, the sponge not sort of stick to the foil. But the foil is there to sort of retain the heat around each pud. Just wrap this over the top, nice and tight. This string, you just wrap around nice and tight, just to keep this sponge in check. These lovely little gifts of sponge, I'm gonna go straight into my steam basket. on top of the wok. You will need to top up water as you go, or you could use a saucepan and just put more water in. You want to steam that for about 45 to 50 minutes, a fair amount of time, because you want to make sure those sponges cook all the way through and it nice and fluffy. Make sure every sort of 10 minutes or so, you're just topping up with some hot water from the kettle and you'll be fine. So these guys have had about 50 minutes and you can see that steam coming off them. And this is the moment where you might feel a little bit nervous opening these up, hoping they've done what you want them to do, but have confidence. Ooh, the smell, the aroma of the, the five spice mixing in with the orange zest, just works with that. Just the press and pull that sponge away from the mold, just so you can ease it out nicely. Take your plate, pop it over the top, and then turn, just for luck, and let it come out. Look at that spicy, sweet, plummy, Good. I'm going to add a good drizzle of custard around the edge. Yes. Nice and generous. I've got my steamed plum pudding. Now, isn't that beautiful? That star and she's sort of sitting at the top of that pudding looks great. All of the dishes today have had a bit of spice. From that mouth-watering Sichuanese chicken 
wontons and chilli broth with Joe, to those cheeky lamb skewers on the barbecue, and of course, that aromatic plum steam pudding. I love using the spice, and I hope it encourages you to add more spice to your own home cooking. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>